Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure for me that during my first visit ever to Ireland, I already have a visit, I'm paying this visit as a minister, and I have a pleasure also to speak to you, to this distinguished audience, uh, this important uh, institute. In uh, my today's uh, speech presentation, I would like to present a <coughs> number of uh, remarks uh, on the current state of affairs in Europe from, of course, the Polish uh, perspective, as well from the perspective of our close neighbors, our Central Europe, Visegrad 4. Since, as you know, the uh, countries of my region present a quite coherent uh, front with regard to many issues. I will also try to mention our policy recipe for the, for the future, if it's possible to have a refuge re recipe. Uh, the pers perspective from which we tend to look at the international politics uh, is determined primarily by two factors. One is geography and the second one is history. <clears throat> by emphasizing we, I mean first uh, of all the people, of course, of my country, all the Poles, but uh, I believe that all the nations living in Central and Eastern Europe share to a large extent uh, similar views on an experience in this uh, regard. The, the land and the country we live uh, on its uh, geopolitical is uh, in a very located in a very difficult geopolitical area. Uh, it has uh, always been a significant bridge between the east and the west, a uh, geographical feature that has created for us both opportunities and uh, risks. By connecting the East with the West, our region was able to benefit greatly from uh, trade opportunities in times of stability. The region was the hub of uh, intensive exchange, a veritable mingling pot of different peoples and cultures. Also, at times, it was a land of uh, tolerance and freedom for those seeking refuge from the oppressed of uh, the lands in both Western absolutism and Eastern atrocities. In this context, I would like to recall the Warsaw Confederation of 1573, which uh, has been part of UNESCO memory of the World Programme since 2003. This uh, groundbreaking law granted a, a eternal peace to believers of different relig religions within the, my country, thus making the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth a much safer and more tolerant place than most of Europe at that time in 16th century. Indeed, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, which I have just mentioned, is an excellent example illustrating the potential of our region. This uh, dualistic state, which lasted from 1569 to 1795 and guaranteed relative political stability to Poland and Lithuania, is sometimes considered to be a prototype of the European Union. <clears throat> In terms of governing arrangements, the Commonwealth was both unique and in a stark contrast with the political processes taking place in the rest of Europe. For many decades, it was one of the most democratic, democratic states, not only in Europe, but uh, also throughout the world. It was therefore not accidental that uh, the first written constitution in Europe and the second in the world was proclaimed in Warsaw in 1791. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth perished and disappeared as a sovereign state in 1795 it, uh, in what we call the third and final partition of Poland, just four years after the proclamation of the Constitution of May the 3rd. The multinational Austro-Hungarian Empire, which encompassed the lands of our current Visegrad four partners, <coughs> ceased to exist after the World War I. Twenty years later, the Central European Plain became an arena that witnessed the greatest 
atrocity ever committed in the course of human history. Awareness, cons consciousness of constant vulnerability resulting from, both from our geography and history affects our policies and strategies even today. Although much has uh, changed in Europe and beyond since then, democratic and mostly uh, peaceful revolutions took, that took place in our region in 1989 gave us a breathing space. We regained sovereignty and independence and once again became subject and not object of international politics. We are able to choose freely our alliances and the model of our economic development. This is the result of being uh, of our accession to NATO and then to European Union. Our region flourished again and became the source of inspiration for the neighboring countries. Ukraine, of course, being the most striking example. Obviously, this major breakthrough was possible due to the rollback and subsequent crumbling of the Soviet Empire. A rollback that now, after 20 years, seems more and more as a temporary pause, not a definitive end of the history. Therefore, we are now looking at the East with uh, growing anxiety that Russia might again embark on a mission of aggressive empire building. At the same time, we are afraid of being pushed away from the core of the European project into the periphery, a sort of a gray area where lower standards apply. Uh, some tend to point fingers at our region and claim that it is becoming less European and less democratic. It cannot be denied that the majority of the Central European nations are very attached to their sovereignty and look with suspicion at any initiative that could unnecessarily limit the freedom of action. That does not mean, however, that they are anti-European. Anti the base of uh, common European project on the idea of sovereign nations act, acting together according to their values and interests is a responsible policy that we advocate. I can't speak to you uh, today without mentioning the consequences of the June referendum in the United Kingdom. I do realize, however, significant the prospect of Brexit is for Ireland. I would like to assure you that we have been diligently doing our homework in Warsaw in order to prepare for the European Union-UK talks. It goes without saying that we are committed to maintaining very close political and economic ties between the European Union and the United uh, Kingdom. The UK is and will, be con will continue to be a Poland uh, strategic partner. We have uh, scheduled Polish-British intergovernmental consultation for the November 28th, so it means next Monday. All our government will go to London to talk with the British government about the future of Europe. The United Kingdom is the second importer of the Polish goods with a trade exchange amounting to almost 17 billion euros. Having said that, it's clear that we are obliged to defend the interests of our citizens and our economy during the European Union-UK talks, just as many as uh, any other, just as much as any other European Union member states. I would like to underline that the Polish government is of the view that the roots of dissatisfaction of the British people with the current state of affairs in the European Union are of more universal uh, nature. <clears throat> Therefore, I believe it is appropriate to admit that the prospect of losing such an important EU member <coughs> uh, as the United Kingdom should encourage the rest of us to reflect in a profound manner on the current state of play within the European Union and, if, and even revisit some of the conventional wisdoms about the European integration. Indeed, the European Union requires reforms 
in our opinion, the famous dichotomy, sometimes we say, we say it, there's a dilemma, more or less Europe, is not the most important uh, one. What we clearly need is, uh, is a Europe which is functioning in a better way. So instead asking more or less Europe, the answer is better Europe. Sometimes integrating further, for instance, in the single market, and sometimes leaving uh, or returning power to the national level. We have to remember that the nation states are cornerstones of European and uh, of Europe, and thus uh, any political designs about the future of the European Union should put the needs in the center. Speaking about the current political and social trends in the European Union, one cannot uh, omit the notions of populism and anti-Europeanism, two worrying phenomena with very diverse roots. Nowadays, we experience an, uh, a wide array of external pressures, globalization with all its advantages and disadvantages, as well as a digital revolution, which both destroys existing business models and creates new ones all over Europe. Europe. Hence, I believe that we should start by setting the bar of expectation towards the European Union at a more realistic level. From the Warsaw point of view, the European integration is highly beneficial as it enhances prosperity and provides a clear framework for the peaceful coexistence of European nations. But uh, we cannot expect that you solve all our domestic, often structural problems. We should also be careful with the uh, illusions of federal nature, because the emergence of a European nation is a light years, uh, I would say, yes, a light years away from now. All in all, as I have mentioned earlier, we should start by putting back the nation states at the heart of the European Union. I believe my speech would not be complete without discussing major issues with regard to uh, the international security environment, which unfortunately becomes more and more unpredictable. The number of potential unknown factors, terrorists, cyber attacks, threaten our security from many different directions. Traditional threats to security which seems to fade away after the end of the Cold War, have returned. Apart from threats, there are also other issues which will shape considerably our foreign security policy. I would say the most significant ones are potential consequences of naturally the Brexit, which I mentioned early, for the European project, and foreign policy of the new United States uh, administration. In the context of security, a uh, separate reference must be made to the Russia's actions. The events from 2008 in Georgia and 2014 in Ukraine clearly prove that Russia is capable of using military force against sovereign states in order to, in the immediate uh, neighborhood, in order to change international order and international architecture in Europe. These events have uh, threatened international order and the fundamental OSC principles, as well as raised concern in countries such as Poland. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that uh, we, <coughs> I mean, we Poles, we Poland, um, uh, are the only European Union NATO uh, country uh, bordering Russia and Ukraine, which is uh, uh, aggressor and a victim of aggression. In addition, Moscow's recent engagement in Syria had shed some new light on Russia's strategic aspirations. Cyber attacks on the U.S. selection process add to this picture. All these uh, infamous actions clearly show that Russia is capable of striking well beyond its close neighborhood. I'm afraid that uh, even Ireland is not immune. 
The flights of the Russian strategic bombers capable of carrying nuclear weapons, which took place next to the Irish airspace in September 2016, were just one of the examples. Does it really mean that Poland is somehow inherently hostile to Russia? Uh, the answer is no, contrary to that. I would like to assure you that a stable and predictable Russia acting in accordance with international law is what Poland strongly wishes. Unfortunately, we do not think that Russia takes serious international acknowledged rules and obligations. I am sure that uh, you will agree with me that uh, Russia, Russia's aggression in Georgia, annexation of Crimea, and its direct military support for militants in eastern Ukraine are quite meaningful, meaningful signs of the country's unpredictability. We should not get confused who is a victim here and who is a perpetrator. Poland and Europe at large would feel much safer if Russia withdrew from the occupied territories of Ukraine and Georgia. I would not only uh, strengthen Russia's credibility, but, uh, but would also foster stability of the European structure, security architecture. We would uh, like to believe that Moscow, when it declares that Russia possesses neither a threat to NATO nor to the European Union. But first, we need to receive some evidence that Russia's words are consistent with their deeds. Given the wide array of security-related challenges, both from the South and uh, East, at the NATO summit in Warsaw, we took a number of pragmatic decisions. The decisions to enhance NATO, NATO's presence in Poland and the Baltic states were strongly advocated by the Polish side. I am very glad that NATO deployment of troops in Central Europe is the first serious step to make security of all allies more equal. Ireland is a member of the European Union, but not a member of NATO. This is what makes us different. Ireland decided to stay outside, aside, outside of the aside and outside of the alliance, whereas Poland believes we are better off in. As uh, sovereign states, we are all able to make our own choices. Ireland, like uh, Sweden and Finland, is not forced to join NATO. Although from the strategic point of view, we could argue it would be desirable for NATO to have you on board someday. As I briefly mentioned in the beginning, I would also like to discuss today some key issues with regard to the cooperation between Czechia, Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland and Slovakia within the framework of the Visegrad Group, which celebrates this year its 25th anniversary. I believe I'm uh, entitled to do that since Poland will hold for the next seven additional months the rotating presidency of the Visegrad Four. So first of all, uh, Visegrad 4 is an important platform for dialogue. We consult each other mm, and, on, on many issues, but we do not have to be unanimous every time. We cannot exclude that without the establishment of the Visegrad group, we would remain some sort of a buffer zone in our, in our region. Mas, much of the Visegrad Force cooperation revolves around the European Union related topics. The primary goal of the group is to enhance the cooperation between our four countries, improve the region's co cohesion, especially in infrastructure, as well as uh, in economic and social cultural terms. And finally, to better represent and thus defend the interest of the Visegrad 4 region on the international stage. Given the prospect of Brexit, we have to be recently uh, discussing the future course of the European Union and our expectation towards it. A constructive vision 
work out by the Visegrad four countries should inter alia take into account proposals on how to strengthen the European Union solidarity, legitimacy, cohesion, and the sub subsidiary principle. Solutions on how to strengthen the European Union's competitiveness and to prevent internal divisions will also be of a key importance. These themes are currently being analyzed and discussed by the Visegrad Four leaders together with our partners. Uh, let me tell you, for example, that on the eve of the September European Union 27 summit in Bratislava, so the first summit without the presence of the United Kingdom, uh, Visegrad Four prime ministers met with the German Chancellor Angela Merkel to discuss the future of Europe. The V4 countries are fully committed to strengthening the position of Central and Eastern Europe on our continent. We deeply believe that only such a strategy can help us break away from the stigma of being the European Union periphery. It's uh, clear that Visegrad 4 also faces a number of big challenges. We have to foster economic integration, primarily by accelerating the development of our infrastructure on the north-south axis. But when we are talking about north-south axis, we must not think exclusively about energy or transportation infrastructure, but also about the axis linking Nordic, Baltic, Visegrad, both Eastern and Western Balkan, Carpathian and Black Sea countries. Defense policy is an important pillar of the V4 cooperation too. The implementation of decisions taken at the NATO summit in Warsaw is of a paramount importance in this respect. The group, uh, the Visegrad 4, can make a lasting contribution to NATO's activities in order to demonstrate that the Atlantic Alliance is resilient against all types of threats. The European Union uh, V4 Battle Group is a good example of V4 cooperation in defense matters. We also support the integration process of the Western Balkans, as well as the rapprochement of the Eastern European countries with the European Union. However, we cannot tackle these topics in a mechanical way. These are not goals in, them, in themselves. They should serve the improvement of the geopolitical position of the region. Uh, let me turn now to an issue which currently plays a major role in Poland's foreign policy agenda. This is a bid for the UN Security Council non-permanent seat for the term 2018-2019. If elected, we see our membership in the Security Council as an important instrument to enhance our contribution to internal, international peace, or maybe internal, international peace and security. We have uh, developed our campaign around three words, solidarity, responsibility, and commitment. Solidarity is not only a name of the movement which triggered historic transformation in Poland and in Europe. It is also a vital symbol of international cooperation without which the success of transformation could not be possible. We are ready to increase our contribution to international cooperation, acting in the spirit of solidarity and responsibility, as well as drawing from our own experience in carrying out successful political and economic reforms. The rule of law, respect for the principles of international law, as well as uh, for the sovereignty and territorial integrity are prerequisites of equal and fair participation of states in international cooperation. All of us should take uh, actions to ensure that purposes and principles of the United Nations are fully implemented and then the organization is capable of responding effectively to challenges of the modern world. In this context, I would like to thank Irish government for the support, 
we promise to be, if elected, a creative and active member of the United Nations Security Council. Uh, let me conclude with a, a lighter, softer note by referring to an exceptional initiative that was launched here in Ireland by both Irish and Polish communities as well as individuals. Polish Air Festival, a unique integration project celebrating our friendship and close relation, was launched in 2015 and has resulted in hundreds of events, events uh, since then. These uh, projects are focused on family, uh, culture, sports, but also on science and business. It is uh, second edition this year took place under the slogan, the crack will be dobry. <laughs> Finally, I do believe that if we work uh, hard together, a similar spirit of uh, cooperation will also help strengthen the bonds between all European Union members for the benefit of all of us. Now is the most difficult part of my speech. Gura Mahagut Goler. Thank you very much.